and I was spinning and 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 eventually I woke up and when I woke up I found myself standing in the middle of a mangrove forest. The mangrove forest is a forest of mangrove trees. Mangrove forests are usually found near the ocean in the calm estuaries where the ocean goes in and out as the tide goes high and low. When the tide is high, the trees and their roots are completely under the water. And when the tide is low, the trees and their roots are completely out of the water. With high water, low water, and lots of places to hide, the mangrove forest is home to many animals. Mangrove forest is not only a great place to live, it's also a great place to find food. With lots of fish hiding in the mangrove, lots of animals that eat fish call the mangrove their home. This mangrove forest has lots of holes. I wonder who lives inside. Fish aren't the only animals that are living in the water of the mangrove forest. Crabs spend some of their time living in the water, some of their time living in the holes in the ground, and some of their time climbing the roots of the mangrove trees. And with so many crabs, so many fish, and so many other kinds of small animals, the mangrove attracts lots and lots of different species of birds that walk and fly and eat the small animals living near the mangrove roots. Birds aren't the only ones coming for crabs. Reptiles, like caiman and crocodiles, and especially very young caiman and very young crocodiles. There are also lots of mammals that live in the mangrove forest. Seeds, berries, insects, even crabs. The white-faced capuchin monkeys eat everything they can find in the mangrove forest. Like the monkeys, raccoons are also mammals and they're also omnivores, which means they eat everything. As the tide goes out, these crab-eating raccoons walk along the shallow streams and feel the bottom for crabs, insects, and any other kind of animal that might be food. The pizotes are also omnivores. Using their claws and long snout, they can dig for crabs that are hiding, they can find insects, and when they're done eating animals, they can look for other things to eat, like fruits and berries and nuts hanging from the trees. And while in the United States we usually think of squirrels eating just nuts and seeds, in Costa Rica 
they eat all those things. Fruits and insects and little, little animals, whatever they can find. Another animal living in the mangrove forest is the howler monkey. Howler monkeys use their strong tails to hold on to the branches while using their arms and legs. And while all the other mammals living in the mangrove are mostly omnivores, eating insects and crabs, berries, nuts, whatever they can find, the howler monkeys eat mostly leaves. And because they eat leaves, the mangrove trees need to be wary because if they eat too many leaves, the mangrove trees won't be able to get energy from the sun. The mangrove forest provides a home and food for many animals. But how do the trees get what they need? In most forests, the interesting things about the trees are their trunks or their bark or their leaves. But in a mangrove forest, things are interesting in different ways. In the mangrove forest, the most interesting thing may be the tree roots. Mangrove roots spend part of their day above the water and part of their day covered in salt water. We all know that unless you are a fish, being covered and surrounded by water is not the most comfortable way to be. And while it might be fun to go for a swim or a snorkel, if you're underwater too long, you can't breathe. Earlier this year, our science class asked the question, do plants need oxygen? In our experiment, we were able to take away some, but not all the oxygen, by putting plants in containers and burning the oxygen out of the containers. What we found was that plants in our classroom grow much, much better when they have oxygen. The plants in containers where we had burned out some of the oxygen had smaller leaves than the plants that were growing in the classroom. The plants in the no oxygen containers also had roots growing out of the soil and roots growing out of the stems. During our experiment, we accidentally flooded one of the containers that was growing healthy bean plants. Even though the bean plants were still able to get some oxygen from their leaves, that oxygen didn't appear to be enough to keep the plants alive. So, if the mangrove trees find their roots completely under the water for half the day, how do the mangrove trees get oxygen? Hmm, maybe mangrove trees just don't need that much oxygen. I wonder what we could observe to find out. One way that mangrove trees get oxygen is through their leaves. Since the leaves are always above the water, the leaves are one way it can get oxygen. Unfortunately, unlike humans or other animals that have blood to transport oxygen all over their bodies, trees don't have a way to get oxygen from the leaves to the roots. When the roots are underwater, the trees can't breathe. And if the roots are underwater too long, the trees would die. To deal with this challenge, over millions of years, mangrove trees have adapted. While most of the roots go deep underground so the mangrove can absorb water, some of the roots come up out of the ground. And when these roots come up out of the ground, the mango tree can breathe fresh air even when the rest of its roots are completely covered by water. So my friends, there you have the story of the mangrove forest. The mangrove is a forest of mangrove trees. Mangrove trees are different than other trees because they have adapted to be able to survive even when half their lives 
are spent living in flooded salt water. Mango trees breathe through their leaves and they have extra long roots that not only anchor the tree to the ground, but also come back up out of the soil so the trees can breathe even when the water is high. Mangroves provide home to many animals, especially small ones like fish, crabs, and insects. These small animals provide food for birds, crocodiles, caimans, monkeys, raccoons, pizzotes, and squirrels. And while we don't have mangrove forests near Washington, D.C., there are some mangrove forests in the southern United States. And in northern parts, we have environments and plants that also have special adaptations. Salt marshes and tide pools support many small animals that feed fish, birds, and larger animals. And along our Potomac River, sycamore trees, black walnuts, and box elder maples all have very strong roots that allow them to tolerate flooding of the river without washing away. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Think about some of the ways that mangrove trees have adapted to survive in an ever-changing saltwater environment.